Hello everyone and welcome to the Navin Times Talk from the Heart. Homeopathy has been there for a very long time. However, there is a lot of controversy about it. There are those who swear by it. In fact, the number of people who I know who are going to homeopathy as a mode of treatment, that number is increasing. There are also those who say homeopathy is a fraud. Homeopathy is quackery. There are two sides of the coin. Homeopathy right now is a mystery. I'm sure it is a mystery as much as it is from me and as well as for you. Today in our studio, we have with us an expert. He is an MD in homeopathy. He is Dr. Ashok Borkar. Dr. Ashok Borkar is also the author of The Pathology Factor in Remedy Selection. Hello, Doctor. Hello. Thank you for coming on our show. It's really nice to have you because we have so many questions regarding homeopathy. Doctor, can you give us a brief idea about your career what what have you been doing how long you've been in goa because from what little you told me you are from bombay yes yes i was born brought up educated in mumbai i finished my graduation in homeopathy from mumbai and then i decided to start my practice in a village in goa that was my childhood dream okay that i should go and serve rural people where there are no doctors so i came to goa and right. I was hunting for a place to practice in the villages. That's when somebody told me that in Paroda village in near Kepe, there is no doctor for the last six years. Oh my so goodness. I went there, I talked to the panchayat people. They gave me a small room. They said, we need a doctor, start here. When was this? How, this was how in long 1991. Ago? Okay. And so I started my practice there and by God's grace, uh, people started coming. I started convincing them that uh, homeopathy will be good for you like they would come for an injection or a tablet and then I would ask them how long have you been suffering from this problem say this headache or acidity or whatever right. joint pains what they had and they would say we get it every few days we take some painkiller injection and we feel better so I would tell them okay I will give you something new which will remove the disease from the roots and you will stop getting it again and again. So did they, 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 did they, did they believe you? Did they think, uh, you know, this is homeopathy and Dr. Peel's Dune yeah. Kashami Boris Yeah, this is what they would ask They me. would have asked you because yes, I yes. would. Yeah. Even though I'm an you know, educated person, yeah. I'm sure. Like you look at the pills and you're like, it'll work. But yes, so did it? Did yeah, it th that's what. So I would say, okay, you have been suffering, no? Now take this, see what happens. So I would give them those small pills, which they would feel, oh, what is this? And then call them every two, three days for a follow-up. And as results started coming, good results, then they started referring patients. In fact, I'll tell you the turning point for me in my career was, I started practice in October 1991. On 26th January 1992, it was a Sunday, and a uh, doctor from the nearby hospital, Dr. Kam, he uh, uh, told me I have to go and see a patient who is about to die of cancer. So I went with him for the house visit and he said, can't do anything. She will pass away any moment. She was gasping for breath. Uterine cancer, such a big tumor. Last stages, Tata uh, from Bombay had said, we can't give you any chemo. You are in the absolutely last stage. So you go to your village. And then I said, I can help this. And we admitted the patient, we treated her. She improved very well, completely cured. Every week she would come and sit outside in my clinic and tell her story to p other patients that how she was about to die, how the cancer disappeared, how she got all right. And uh, that's how people came to know more about me and they started coming. So how long were you in the village? I still go there. Although I shifted my clinic to Kepe. But before okay. it was every day, then thrice a, a week. Now I go once a week only. Okay. Later, after a year, I started my practice in the city in Margaon. Right, right. This is for all our viewers, everyone who's watching. Our show is called Talk from the Heart. 
And that's exactly what it is. It's a talk from the heart. We bring resource people, experts in the field, so that they can talk from their heart. They can give you their views, their opinions, their suggestion, their advice. This is their views. And all the views, all the suggestions given are their views and their suggestions. If you would like to use those, that is up to your discretion. So just to let you know, we are having this talk, so hoping that it would help you in some way. So whatever ideas, we do not intend to hurt anyone's feelings, uh, neither do we want to cause any dispute. So to continue, doctor, uh, you have written this book, Pathology Factor in Remedy Selection. Now that sounds a little deep. I'm sure you agree with me. So, Doctor, what, in, in few words, please don't make it uh, technical and complicated. <laughs> please explain to us in a few words, what is, is your book about? I'll tell you the story behind the book. Uh, what happened is after about uh, 15 years of practice, I realized that in pathologically advanced cases, serious pathology, like cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, autoimmune diseases, our results with homeopathy were not consistent. We were able to only relieve the patient and very few patients would actually get cured. So I decided to study this a little more and I started reading all the books of the old masters. I studied uh, the cases of successful cases of the present day teachers and then I found a solution to this problem. So I found out a technique of treating pathologically advanced cases. I found out that the knowledge of pathology is very important while prescribing. So this book is about, that's why the name is Pathology Factor. How important is the pathology when we are making a prescription? So this is a technique which I found out. I wrote a book and uh, a lot of people use it all over the world now. You also, uh, from what you told me before the show, Doctor travels um, around, outside India of course, as well, and um, you give master classes yes, in yes. homeopathy. So can you tell us where do you teach? And My uh, first experience uh, abroad was when they called me to Budapest in Hungary okay. in 2009. I did a three day uh, seminar there and uh, later on I've taught in Israel. I've been to Mexico twice in okay. 2015 and 16. I've done three day seminars there. I've right. taught in Australia. Okay. So, and I, I have uh, homeopaths from all over the world coming to my clinic to learn homeopathy. They are practicing for like uh, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years also, but they want to learn more and they want to know more about how to treat serious advanced pathology. Which you have done for, a in depth study. Yes. So for that, they come to my clinic for a month, two months, six months as observers to study to uh, enhance their skills. That is really, really commendable because as a Goan, um, he's a teacher where international uh, doctors are coming to learn from him. It's not just a matter of honor and pride for him, but as for us as well as Goans. So doctor, getting back to you, I always thought, I always thought homeopathy was Indian like all the other, you know, um, disciplines of medicine like uh, uh, Ayurveda, for example, naturopathy. I always thought it came from India. Homeopathy, can you give us a little brief about it? Yeah, homeopathy actually started in Germany. There was a MD physician, allopathic physician. His name was Samuel Hahnemann. And uh, he was uh, he was a linguist. He knew 12 languages, Spanish, French, Italian, German, wow. English, Arabic, Syrian languages, 12 languages. And uh, he was not very happy with the prevailing system of medicine because there were a lot of uh, side effects and people would get relief only temporarily, whereas other sufferings would be more because of the prevailing treatment at that time. So he set out to uh, remedy this situation. So he started reading every possible book on medicine and he would translate all old books and read those while doing that he came across a book called Kalens Matira Medica which was a very popular book at that time in that it was written that quinine cures malaria because it is bitter 
he did not buy this. He said, no, how is it possible? There are so many bitter substances. They don't cure malaria. So he decided to experiment. He took some quinine and drank it. Soon after that, he started getting chills and then high fever, which came down with a lot of perspiration. So he realized these are the symptoms of malaria. So when I drank quinine, I got symptoms of malaria. So he thought probably quinine cures malaria because it has the power of producing uh, symptoms similar to malaria. So this conclusion, he thought he will verify in practice. So he used other drug substances and did the same experiment. And I found that he found that it was true. So he started using this method to cure people. Like coffee causes uh, sleeplessness. So if somebody would come with sleeplessness, they would give coffee as the medicine, patient would get cured. Opium causes constipation and that is why opium can cure constipation. So this is how homeopathy started in 1796. Later on, uh, other doctors from Europe came to know about it. They started doing it and then it spread from all over Europe to USA. In fact, from say 1850 to 1910, whole USA homeopathy was dominant. And those masters have written books about how they cure serious diseases also with homeopathy. Okay, all right. Um, that's great. Now, would you categorize homeopathy as um, orthodox uh, treatment would you say that it is a complementary treatment or alternative how would you categorize orthodox not definitely orthodox why orthodox means orthodox is something which is uh, going on for a long time and very common now the orthodox method is what if there is a symptom you treat that symptom if there is pain uh, make the patient pain free if there is a tumor cut the tumor remove it away this is orthodox treating the symptoms. Actually, these are the end result of a disease process. So homeopathy is not orthodox. It goes to the roots. It finds out why the person is having pain. Why is there a tumor there? What has led to it? So it cures from the roots. So it is not orthodox. Complementary, yes. No system of medicine is 100% perfect. Okay. Uh, Allopathic medicine may be very good for emergency cases, pain management temporarily or something like that. Homeopathic medicine is the only thing for chronic diseases. When somebody is suffering for a long time with recurrent problems, the only answer is homeopathy. Right. So all systems of medicines are complementary. We have to do what is best for our patient at that time. So I will give my homeopathic medicine. If somewhere Ayurveda is required, that knowledge has to be used. Yoga has to be used. Allopathy has to be used whenever really required. So all systems of medicine are complementary. Now, I, 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 sorry to interrupt. This is very profound what you're saying. That you can, because from what I have heard, from what little bit I've read, that you cannot mix allopathy with homeopathy or allopathy with Ayurveda. So I'm so happy uh, that, you know, this doubt that I have is getting clarified. Doctor, so please uh, clarify this. Is it... Uh, no, there is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. One cannot be mixed with other. You can give homeopathic medicine along with any other medicine. There will be no problem. For example, sometimes I'm called to the hospital to see somebody who is very sick, about to die. He's already on 20 allopathic medicines and the allopaths have given up. For example, a case come to my, comes to my mind is a case of acute renal failure. The patient was in delirium, means disoriented. He, his, it was uremic enke encephalopathy, means the kidney had failed, liver had failed and his mind also was not there. Okay, he was very restless, breathless and no urine was passed uh, for uh, a few days. So. They didn't know what to do, so they called me. I went to the patient. Allopathic medicines were going on, but they were not working because the system had failed. I gave medicine. Within one or two hours, he came to his senses. Uh, he started passing urine. Everything was normal. Next day, he was in the ward. He got cured, went home. Now, allopathy was going on before that. Okay. But homeopathy worked. So the, it's not that uh, 
uh, you cannot give homeopathy with allopathy there is nothing like that but can come in at that time so the whole process of cure takes two steps back but we can always put it on okay, track so again. you go back on track it yes. takes a little longer of yes course. so that's what I'm saying it is complementary all right okay that was that was very enlightening now uh, my next question uh, to you is I know um, colds uh, migraines and allergies are some of the conditions that homeopathy treats uh, these are some very chronic yes, ones yes. right allergies yeah. and and so why is homeopathy known for treating just these like you whenever you say you have an allergy you know uh, people normally say if it's not going homeopathy is the best right so why is it only these uh, conditions that are given so much of uh, you know are highlighted in homeopathic treatment yeah uh, this is something to do with my book also, okay? My answer, what I will tell you right. now. For a long time, uh, homeopathy was known for cold, cough, warts, migraines, only that. Right. Right, because uh, cure of serious diseases were rare. It was not so common. If a uh, homeopath was treating like 10 serious cases of say arthritis or cancer or something, only one would improve nine may not improve this was the case before that's why i started studying all this okay but now the scene has changed completely okay in the last say 10 12 years like me there are other good uh, homeopaths all over india and the world who have done a lot of research on this topic and now we see lot of good results in uh, so-called serious diseases so-called incurable diseases so now now what we treat every day in practice is polycystic ovarian disease serious thyroid disorders hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism this gets cured completely okay people don't know about it come to my clinic sit and see or any of my colleagues they all are doing it autoimmune arthritis sle rheumatoid arthritis psoriasis eczemas you know uh, certain types of cancers all these serious pathologies are being treated now because now we have much more research and more consistently good results okay the doctor said that you know you come to my clinic and see I have been to his clinic by the way and it's always crowded and uh, you have to <laughs> wait for a long time but then as I said uh, this just shows that there are more people now going in for homeopathy of course if you are under allopathy or any other treatment we are not saying you need to change. I, I, we are, this is just a view, um, an observation of mine. And Dr. Getting back uh, to, uh, you already said that you know you, you can cure serious uh, chronic conditions. But what about things like MS, multiple sclerosis, or Lyme disease, um, you know, illnesses in that category, which are very chronic, which are terrible and even cancers so yeah. so in such conditions majority of the patients we can only relieve them relieve them means take care of their discomfort the pains and all this is called palliative treatment right very few get cured in fact i have never seen multiple sclerosis getting cured i have seen cancers getting cured in my clinic quite a few times okay Mo most of the patients of cancer we are able to palliate give them relief, extend their life, make them comfortable, give them a good quality of life. Okay. SLE, autoimmune diseases, quite good results now, but yet everybody doesn't cu get cured. Some get cured, majority of them we only palliate. Palliate means give temporary relief of their problems while slowly the disease progresses. That is called palliation. Just like allopathy. Allopathy is all palliative treatment. Okay but only without the side effects that's the only change difference right but there are like multiple sclerosis parkinson's i have never seen getting cured we are still doing our research in this field maybe one day we'll have an answer just like uh, till about two three years back we thought diabetes was not curable we would tell our patients that uh, continue our allopathic di anti-diabetic treatment along with our medicine now three four years back after doing research i came up with a technique to treat diabetes i wrote a small book on that 
now we see a lot of patients of diabetes are actually getting cured no but uh, when i say no i mean what about those who are already on di dialysis there are many um, people you know that i i know a few who are on dialysis and uh, you feel once dialysis begins there is no end uh, to it you, you continue with the dialysis that's what is the general idea am i right uh, yes you are right what you are saying this is what is the general idea yes i treat many renal failure patients some of them come to me before they start dialysis and uh, we we can manage them very well i think homeopathy is the best for those who get renal failure this is the best mode of treatment for them those who are already on dialysis there have been a few patients who have taken off dialysis and they are fine now okay and but majority of the patients we are not able to stop their dialysis those who have already done dialysis for the last 4 uh, months 5 months their system has got used to it it's very difficult to get them off dialysis i have tried to make them from twice a week to once a week dialysis but i have not been able to get them off dialysis but those who have been on dialysis like dialysis has been done three or four times just five six times That's yes okay. i've got them off dialysis and they've been fine last two years three years having a very good quality of life but uh, if it has been going on for a long time like about a year or also no it's very difficult to stop their dialysis so if they come to you uh, i think is a question that even you would have on your mind for example uh, a patient comes to you who has uh, kidney problems who is going through dialysis maybe three times yes. in a week and they come to you yes uh, like what treatment uh, will you give them in the sense ke what can they expect uh, after 6 months yes i'll tell you what how uh, majority of our renal uh, failure patients are like this who are on dialysis so they come with symptoms like nausea uh, cramps in the muscles then uh, heaviness of the head soon after the dialysis so there are some side effects of dialysis breathlessness breathlessness so these are the symptoms which we can relieve with our medicines so the patients continue their dialysis and we provide them relief of the nausea cramps breathlessness heaviness of the head or whatever sick feeling they have we can relieve those symptoms so this while, is complementary while, medicine so while while allopathy is going yes. on they can take yes, that yes that's what we Won't do would it dilute the effect hmm. of uh, no as it is see these are this is not a curable case such cases cannot be cured cured means what totally cured you don't have a problem at all that is cure that's what we see in our practice renal failure i have never seen somebody get totally cured once he is on dialysis doesn't get totally cured it's called palliative treatment give relief to whatever symptoms are coming up now and improve their quality of life okay fine uh, my next question to you is as i said in my introduction there is a very big controversy about homeopathy why is that so what has led to that is it because uh, there are not enough tests done to check on um, you know how how good this treatment is or is there any other reason for this see the controversy uh, there is no controversy for those who have personally experienced good homeopathic treatment okay controversy is created by people who really don't know what homeopathy is they have only heard certain things about homeopathy very superficially they have never sat in a homeopath's clinic and seen the results or they have not read the philosophy of homeopathy the background on what homeopathy is based they have read some superficial things and they have had their own ideas for example this i have read so i am telling you say somebody they say how can homeopathic medicine work they are diluted uh, medicine such dilutions they are so diluted how can it have medicinal effect that's my question to you as yeah, well this is what they ask now uh, a lot of research has been done on this iit has done research on this and they say action of homeopathic medicine can be easily explained with the help of nanotechnology and there's another research not in iit which talks about memory of water how when we dissolve a substance in water the water remains uh, uh, retains the memory of that substance 
So there are molecular studies with microscopes which proves that. So all this has been proved, but people are not aware of it. Okay, so they are saying no, no, this is uh, it has not. Uh, we don't know how it works. It has been proved now, but these people who have controversy in their mind, they are not aware of it, or they have not gone into details of studying that. Another thing, what is science? Science means observing facts and then finding an explanation for that, how it is. Science doesn't mean denying a fact. If you see 10 patients of migraine have got cured, you cannot deny the fact. Then you try to explain how did homeopathy work on them. That you explain, that is science. Those who say it is controversial, they are saying, first they are saying homeopathy doesn't work. This is the first line without experimentation okay secondly you talked something I, I think I'll put it in the right words there are some people who say there are no research papers published uh, on homeopathy yes because doctor and I am sure my our viewers agree we look for results we look for tests that show efficacy of a treatment if that efficacy is not there we doubt it we are human beings we want results we want facts we want figures so i yeah, that so, is so this is a question posed but it is again not true a lot of research is being done all over the world now recently i read a whatsapp post by some allopathic doctor he's saying uh, there is no double blind method in a homeopathy double mind blind method is a way of research there is, then how can you say it is scientific now these are uh, ill-informed people the first ever double blind method of research was used in homeopathy somewhere in 1815 the king of bavaria in germany he and there was some he wanted to prove that uh, sodium chloride common salt if it is diluted it still has a medicinal effect and there was some uh, educated uh, scientific person there who says it cannot work it is a diluted thing so they carried out a double blind uh, research method first ever in the history of science and they found that it works okay mm -hmm. so that king won that bet whatever was there so every research everything that we do in homeopathy is with double blind method since last 200 and 200 years today science is talking about it now we are doing it for 200 years so what we do we take a drug substance and we try to find out what are the effects of that drug substance so it is given to uh, different people of different ages and both sexes and there is a control group whom placebo is given and the drug substance is given to half people half people have given placebo and they have to write down the symptoms produced by this drugs drugs substance and this is how we uh, take what is common in everybody and write it it's down. Called, write yeah. it down this is called drug proving so you are formulating it, yeah, those it is this is double blind result. method since what since 1815 it is going on and now they are pointing out there is no double blind method in uh, homeopathy these are people who don't know they are saying this got it if they f find out study homeopathy and how it started how everything is double blind how the there is a strong philosophy behind it then they will not have any controversy you know speaking about royalty i read somewhere that in london they have a hospital yes a homeopathy hospital yeah uh, and there are lots of patients uh, yes is it is true? a huge hospital and it is funded by the government in fact there was there is a there has been a movement by some pharmaceuticals modern medicine pharmaceuticals to shut it down because it is doing very well lot of people go there the royal family also supports it right you must have heard yes. charles and all Prince they take charles. only homeopathy most of the time right queen the charles and all those people so we and and my next question to you is you said the word in fact placebo yeah a very well known cardiologist i watched on uh, youtube who said homeopathy has a placebo effect but he also said if that placebo works finally and the person gets cured that is what the end product is and that's what the end we are looking for so is homeopathy really a placebo 
for that people should understand what is placebo placebo means you take a substance called medicine or whatever and you start believing that this is going to cure me and you actually start feeling better this is called placebo effect it depends on the person's belief conscious belief that i will take this medicine and i will get better this is called placebo effect now i'll just tell you one or two cases of my clinic uh, about uh, 20 20 20 years 25 years back a small baby was brought to my clinic 21 days old right from birth she had skin problems and in gmc the uh, skin department was treating but there was no success there were multiple uh, boils ulcers all over the body oozing pus yellowish thick offensive pus big big blotches 21 old baby with fever terrible with fever continuously for 21 days and the baby is crying wailing came to an, and the doctor from gmc only sent them because the baby was not improving in spite of steroids uh, antibiotics anti allergics painkillers antacids everything they put six seven bottles on our table all this was given the baby was not improving we stopped all that medicine gave one single dose of the right homeopathic medicine the pus stopped the baby stopped crying the fever went away how long did that take we were seeing the baby every second day so within a week the baby was completely all right only some black marks remained which took about 3 uh, 4 years to go this child who is a big adult now maybe 24 25 year old she came to meet me few days back to ask certain other things other she doesn't is not under treatment anymore completely cured so what i am saying did that baby know that we are giving homeopathic medicine no how can it be placebo okay uh, already some allopathy was given before the baby had no idea what is being given to her if it was placebo how will the baby right. get cured right so it can't be placebo there is a direct effect there may be a placebo effect as that doctor cardiologist said which will also help which is very good but in serious pathological conditions placebo effect will not be that good you know you can't uh, reverse a serious pathology somebody in acute renal failure is not in his senses you cannot reverse uremia with placebo it has to be done with medicine so but, it cannot but, be only but, placebo effect but is there a a mind and body connect which we have been hearing so much about and in fact we've had people on our show who have spoken about it so is there a mind and body um, you know connect where homeopathy is concerned that um, because my mind is saying of course again it's coming to the placebo but is there some connect according 100%. to 100% now right from the first days of homeopathy the method of treatment has been holistic means if you have migraine for example we try to find out why are you getting migraine it's always connected to stress so we try to find out what is your emotional state for how long it has been there and unless we give you a remedy which covers the emotional state as well as the pain we cannot cure so in every patient who comes to us whether it is migraine or joint pain or cancer we have to investigate the mind of the patient in detail understand how his mind works what is his emotional state what is the stress he is having because physical pathology is because of the mental state so in every patient we consider the uh, mind of the patient the emotional state of the patient and prescribe a remedy which will heal that supposing there is a deep trauma some emotional hurt some disappointment in love after which you have fallen sick our medicines help to heal that disappointment so that that person can be free again and live his right. life now this mind body connection has been used in homeopathy right from the first days of homeopathy 225 years back modern medicine found it out recently so you know what we have been for all these years they are saying it now i remember when i started studies 30 years back 35 years back they were saying uh, 20% of the diseases are because of mental stress after 10 years they said 50% are because of mental stress now they say 80% is because of mental stress right 
we have been saying in homeopathy since beginning everything is connected to mental stress right right and uh, as doctor said you know they look at the mind and body connect they 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 know, want to know about the history of the patient and that was my question to you that the first time you go to a homeopath you spend at least an hour an hour and a half if i am not mistaken because as a child uh, growing up in bombay i had very severe acne thank god it's less but uh, you know so i had gone to a very very well known um, homeopath in south uh, mumbai and he gave me of course at that time he gave me some liquid in a bottle and he said you have to just take one teaspoon or one i i don't remember was very i was small i mean very very young like i i couldn't remember i said the word small i mean i was just i was very young but it did help uh, it took a really long time for the acne to go let me tell you that but when i started i still remember the day i sat in his clinic and he kept asking in in questions which i found very s at that time i was like why is he wasting my time i want to go home i want to go home we we mm. it appears to be very silly like mm. what time or uh, type of climate are you happy in do you like spicy food or is it sweet food and questions like that doctor it's why yeah. why so many yeah i'll tell you see as i said we have to understand exactly how uh, your mind and body functions in fact there are three things we have to understand what is your family history to know the tendency of your body to get certain diseases if your family history of arthritis you are likely to get arthritis so we want right. to give some medicine to prevent that okay yes. so family history of heart attacks we want to we want to know what is the tendency of your body so we give medicine to prevent that so we need to know the family history we know we need to know the past history to find out the connection with your present complaint okay right now it is like this uh, in our materia medica we have a lot of drugs okay 4 5000 remedies drugs every drug uh, has certain mental symptoms and physical symptoms so we want to match your symptoms with us or uh, one of the remedies in our materia medica okay right so we want to know exactly how your mind and body behaves so certain remedies uh, certain patients are sensitive to heat and they like uh, very sweet food they love to eat sweets and they sweat a lot and they drink a lot of water okay he's talking about me i am just giving you four <laughs> symptoms feel okay. hot sweat a lot want to eat lot of sweets and uh, drink lot of water now these are symptoms similar to a medicine called sulfur so if rest of the symptoms are also covered with sulfur and if your pathology is also covered with sulfur it may be joint pain or headache or cancer then you will receive sulfur as a remedy now there are there is a, other medicine called uh, say hyparself now a hyparself patient feels very cold and is very sensitive to pain okay so if a person who is very cold uh, feels very cold and is very sensitive to pain and uh, wants or uh, becomes worse with sour food if such a patient has migraine or arthritis i will give hyparself not sulfur pathology is the same but the way his body behaves is different the rest of the symptom and all is different so in order to match the patient's uh, symptoms with the drug symptoms we need all this information okay so emotional mental physiological biological yeah. everything, everything comes into everything this everything has to match to find that remedy which will be a holistic remedy for you you know you just said that you were describing some of the um, you know um, likes dislikes of a patient and you said someone who likes sweets who drinks a lot of water hmm. and sweats a lot and i said that's me <laughs> because you are literally oh, yeah. describing me now i am allergic to sulfur so if someone has the you know th these are the conditions um, like you said and then um, this person has a problem maybe allergies so how will you treat because if that person is allergic to to sulfur i'm sure most of us know there are certain foods uh, chemicals or whatever it is that you are allergic to so if you are allergic to it do you uh, you know take that into consideration do you still give that person the sulfur then 
I think this is the best question you have asked me because it will answer many more questions. One moment, doctor. Okay. I thought I was asking him all the best questions, <laughs> and he's <laughs> saying this is the best. Okay, fine, no, doctor. I said that because it will answer other questions also. Right. If you have these sulfur symptoms, and if I give you sulfur in crude form, crude means material form, it will aggravate your symptoms. That is why you are, you will say you are allergic to sulfur. Because the sulfur you know is available in crude form or in allopathic form. That is called material dose. Now the same sulfur, when we dilute it, we potentize it. Okay, we dilute it 100 times. Okay. And give you, it will have a curative effect. You get what I am saying? Yes. This is how the uh, principle of uh, dilution and potentization was uh, found out. Because when homeopathy started, Hahnemann found that if you would give sulfur, these symptoms would aggravate first and then get better. Okay. They would aggravate first because you are allergic. They will get aggravated and then you would be feel better. Because the body gets used to it? Is that no, what because you are sensitive to it. Okay. Because you are sensitive to it, you are allergic to it. Right. So there would be initial aggravation followed by amelioration, feeling better. So to uh, remove this aggravation, he started diluting the substance. So we started uh, uh, diluted that sulfur say 10 times, 30 times, 200 times, 1000 times. And then when he gave that sulfur, he saw that there was no aggravation. The patient would be cured straight away with very minimal aggravation which was not even noticeable. This is how potentization starts and that is why homeopathic medicines are given in dilution. Right, right. Because I've always wondered, um, I, I, I know someone who is under homeopathic treatment and when they first started, I, I found it really silly because I just kept looking at the process and I was wondering, what is that person doing? I mean, it, it really appeared silly. So they take this powder and they put it into a glass of water and they tell you approximately so many ml and then they say you stir it to the right eight times and then you stir it to the left ten times I'm just giving a, a random figure okay and then from that you after you do that and you only have to do seven and you only have to do eleven and then from that mixture you take one spoon and you put it into another 100 ml of water and from there you will take one spoon and this was like my first thought of course was rubbish but then when i started seeing that it was helping i did change my mind but why is this and and, and this no no there is nothing about uh, rotating to the right or left and there is nothing much in eight or ten times but you just we have to just gently stir it for maybe half a minute or a minute just so that that drug substance dissolves in the water so you're saying no no no, no there is no strict rule uh, like that no way, right and left nothing like homeopath, that homeopath uh, maybe who, he must have told you know this was about <laughs> eight years ago so has yeah. it changed maybe yeah, it yeah. has changed no 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 know? this was this is not written in any book right we follow our books but let me tell you when you dilute one one drop is also enough not one teaspoon mm. Even if you take one drop and put in the next glass full of water and stir it, it becomes a higher potency. This is how we increase the potency of the substance. We, can, we do it 100 times, 1000 times also. It is done in machines, in ph pharmaceutical uh, factories. Okay. So, and taking one teaspoon, you can take just one drop also, it works. It is because, very hard to believe yeah, that because you know, your after whole, getting diluted because so much. Because your whole system is sensitive to that substance. So just one drop, some doctors just say lick the spoon, they don't even put one drop on the tongue <laughs> and that also works, you know, but sometimes we treat unconscious patients, patient is in coma, I went to GMC once, they said patient is in coma since two months, head injury, coma, two months, this is in the year 1993. I went there, I saw and uh, I had to give medicine, so I dissolved that in water as you said and I put two teaspoons on the dorsum of the hands, two teaspoons on the dorsum of the skin. After three, uh, after the second dose, she started moving her hands. Next day she opened her eyes, that lady is fine till today. Again, see, there is no placebo <laughs> involved here, placebo can't work on a coma patient, right? But even if it touches the skin, it works. Right. And you dilute it thousand times, or it, it can be diluted ten thousand times also. 
the uh, when that drug substance is put in water that water retains the memory the molecular arrangement of that water becomes the molecular arrangement of that drug substance and that is transferred from one glass to another as we dilute it so with the thousand the glass will also have the same molecular structure this has been studied with microscopes it doesn't get diluted it is diluted but the structure molecular structure is the same all right okay of that uh, altered water drug uh, uh, water molecular substances uh, structure is altered by the drug substance water is a universal thing it becomes whatever is mixed in it it becomes that all right it's like that of course of course so uh, doctor tell us what role like in ayurveda food is primary in in the treatment uh, that's what i think that's what i've heard and read so is the same is this uh, idea the concept does this apply to um, homeopathy as well see in our homeopathy books it is uh, very few instructions are given regarding exactly how and what diet to follow it only says you have to follow a healthy diet and sort very few things are given so i feel that way diet is an uh, advised in ayurveda is the best there is no doubt about it in homeopathy there is no specific diet except for a few conditions Few conditions like, like uh, arthritis, uh, you know, gout, arthritis, where you have to avoid high protein foods, and certain foods have to be avoided. That is related to that disease. Homeopathy, as such, has doesn't have any strict diet considerations. Okay. It doesn't. So generally, my patients eat everything. I tell them avoid whatever aggravates you. Right. Eat everything. So else. that is something I think uh, uh, each person has to. It's uh, personalized, yeah. Yes, Depending and you have to check what is good for you, what is not good. Yeah. I know the foods that I'm very allergic to, and I keep away from them because after that I suffer if I have it even by mistake. So each one has to decide about that, doctor. Uh, Wait, I want to say something yes. else here. Sorry. As you take homeopathic medicine and get cured, these things which aggravate you will stop aggravating you. So, in fact, when children are brought, they say if they can't eat an ice cream, immediately gets throat infection. We treat the child, and then they say, now the child eats ice creams, can eat everything. You got what I'm saying? Right. A real cure is this. When they come and tell me, my child was getting asthma, severe asthma, he couldn't take a sip of cold water. Now, last uh, seven years, he's cured completely. He drinks cold water, drinks everything. Right. This is a real cure. This is what we are looking at. It's the not root that, cause. Yeah. So when you are cured, it's not that forever you have to be on a diet. Then, once you are cured, you can eat everything, and that happens with homeopathic medicine. So homeopathy is gaining popularity, uh, wouldn't you say? Very much. It's gaining popularity right from the day I started. I have seen what it was before, where it has reached now. In fact, um, uh, India has the maximum following for uh, homeopathy. India. South America, Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, those bigger South American countries, they have a big following for homeopathy just like India. Right. Okay. Right. Switzerland, you can practice, uh, it's officially, uh, it's given official status in Switzerland, homeopathy. But in some countries, you know, it's just uh, rising again, like USA. USA it had right. gone down it was like very less in between now it is rising it is very surprising that you speak about you know countries like uh, like Switzerland yeah you would that uh, homeopathy is uh, something major in in Switzerland and um, I know of a doctor very well-known homeopath from Kalangut who is practicing in Switzerland and really really doing mm -hmm. well for himself so our doctors, our goans are like all <laughs> over. It's it's so, it's so. I mean, it's it's something to be really, really proud about. Doctor, we have just another five minutes, and I just have two, three questions. My treatment when I started homeopathy for my acne took a really long time. I had to live with my acne uh, as a child, and it was traumatic not just physically you know you have to live with it but mentally emotionally it is bad it took a long time this was when i was a child this was when i was in school in my teens so it, is homeopathy still a very slow process or due to 
you know so much of um, so much of leaps in, in medicine and especially in homeopathy today treatment is quicker homeopathy was never a slow process it depends on the skill of the prescriber sometimes the doctor has not able to understand your whole mental and physical state many times because the patient has not revealed uh, himself totally to the doctor his sensitivities some people feel why should i tell my emotional problems to the doctor and they don't tell sometimes they don't tell sometimes a doctor is not skilled enough to find out You're right and then uh, one two three remedies are given and then later he finds the right remedy so it takes time if you find the right remedies right from the beginning it's very fast it's like this i must say this because this is how patients also have to judge when a patient comes to us for any complaint okay in the follow up we judge what is the change in the intensity frequency and duration of the complaint for example if you have severe headache lasting for 2 days migraine and it comes every week in the follow up if it was lasting for 2 days patient should tell you if is better that it's only for 3 4 hours now in uh, the duration has reduced if it was very severe it is just a little bit now so intensity is less and instead of once a week it's once a month now frequency is less so these are the parameters how you judge your follow up intensity duration and frequency of the complaint goes on becoming less 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 in between there may be exacerbations which need a different medicine and then again it comes down and then it gets cured so this is the way it has to be monitored if it is not improving like this you tell your doctor doctor i am not improving that my intensity duration and frequency of my problem is not becoming less please study my case again and then the doctor will you know again sit with you and uh, take a little more history and you may be able to tell what you have not told before then you are on the road to recovery all right um i just another two questions doctor you have spoken that uh, cancer can be treated with uh, with uh, homeopathy now i know the viewers may not all agree they will not believe it and they will discredit this but like we said these are the views of our participants these are my views that I'm, we are speaking about and we are not imposing anything on anyone so yes doctor what do you have to say about it i treat so many cancer patients every day okay now see cancer is a very big topic to discuss in a few minutes but in short i'll tell you with proper homeopathic treatment uh very rarely you get a cure every homeopath every good homeopath has cured at least four uh, cancer cases in his uh, 20 30 year old career total cure huh? total cure only with homeopathy so it's rare but every homeopath has cured at least four let me tell you majority of the patients we relieve them of their pains and so suffering palliative treatment. and give palliative and improve their quality of life this is what we do every day in our practice so it is a patient's choice there are some patients no who are told we cannot give you chemotherapy we cannot give you radiotherapy you are so frail and weak where do they go such patients come to us and when they get relief they are really happy i have such cases recorded on video of such patients and how beautifully they got relief and they became pain free so this is definitely something which people should know that when, if there is no medicine in allopathy doesn't mean it's the end there are other ways to give relief to your patients right what is this my last question to you we have run out of time um i have many more but since we, you know there's paucity of time i'm just going to ask this one question and i think it's really important dr what would you say is the one major difference between allopathy or allopathic treatment and homeopathic treatment that one one major difference is all allopathic treatment is symptomatic it will uh, if you have pain it will give you something so that you don't feel the pain if you have a tumor a sebaceous cyst or a fibroid they will remove the fibroid to give you relief this is allopathy homeopathy will find out why you have got the pain what is your emotional state treat that emotional state so that you stop getting the pain if you have a tumor we find out what is your history why you have developed the tumor give one medicine so that the body gets rid of the tumor by itself without surgery this is the basic difference right 
so much of information i am sure not just me even our viewers have learned so much all those who are watching um thank you for watching again the ideas and the views opinions advice shared in this program is us and we do not want to impose on anyone what you pick and choose from this is up to you we love having you watch us and listen to us and sending us uh, please do send us your suggestions your comments for further programs and i would like to say thank you so much uh, dr borker as i've said it's it's been a learning experience the last one uh, hour that I, we've spent together i've learned so much and i'm sure so did our viewers so thank you for watching thank you doctor so very much thank and you and till next time take care of yourself and bye from all of us